Mistletoe is a healing plant with a long tradition. Ancient myths describe its magical properties. Celtic druids especially sought out rare oak tree mistletoe, which they revered as a cure-all. Mistletoe differs from other plants in many characteristics. It has neither top nor bottom. It neither orients itself towards the sun nor grows any roots. And it has its own center. Its fruit is produced in winter, not during the warm months, meaning that it behaves contrary to the seasons. For this reason, in Celtic mythology, mistletoe symbolizes the unification of opposites and the interaction of polar energies, such as the sun and moon, light and darkness. From as children, we didn't hear much about mistletoe. In the past, it was always cut down right away because it was considered to be a parasite that destroyed the tree and had to be removed as soon as possible. My father had to feed the family by farming as a supplement. That meant that nature had to always produce as much as possible. One evening, my father called me and said that he had been diagnosed with prostate cancer. At that time, I strongly believed that cancer was a red flag and thought my father was going to die soon. I still remember how I immediately started to cry. And my father said, don't cry, everything will be all right, or something like that. I'll have the operation, and then we'll see what's next. I believe my father had a very strong feeling that he can influence nature. When this worm shows up at a spot where I don't want it to be, then I'll spread something there so it won't come there anymore. My attitude was rather that everything is connected. If this worm appears at this spot, it means something. This often led to conflicts between us and the feeling that we didn't understand each other at all. At that time, seen from the outside, we had a rather distant, cold relationship. The operation went very well, and afterwards it was a question of radiotherapy or whether there might be other options. Among these, we came across mistletoe preparations. My father mentioned to the doctor that he had heard of mistletoe, Iskador, and wanted to know if he could try it. Using mistletoe to treat tumors goes back to Rudolf Steiner, the founder of Anthroposophy. Steiner pointed out the healing effects of the toxic substances of mistletoe with white berries and recommended it for treating cancer. Physician Dr. Ita Wegmann pursued Steiner's suggestions and developed the first mistletoe preparation, Iskar, together with the pharmacist, Adolf Hauser. In 1935, Dr. Wegmann founded the Association for Cancer Research in order to further analyze the potential of mistletoe in treating cancer. Eventually, the knowledge of Dr. Wegmann and Rudolf Steiner formed the basis for the development of the medicinal Iskador, the oldest and best researched mistletoe preparation, which has been produced for more than 60 years at the Hiskia Institute in Switzerland. Today, the Institute continues intensive further research into developing mistletoe extracts to treat cancer. Scientists at the Hiskia Institute not only confirmed the plant's polar characteristics, 
but also the counteractive way that its toxic substances work. In this sense, the integration of opposites plays an important role in the production of Iskador. Twice a year, employees at the Hiskia Institute harvest the mistletoe, once in summer and once in winter, because the concentration of the healing toxic substances varies with the seasons. In summer, the content of viscotoxins is highest. Viscotoxins are small protein molecules and are closely related to the venom of the cobra. They are mostly present at the periphery of the plant, in the young stems, leaves, and berries. Viscotoxins can destroy cancer by dissolving the walls of the cancer cells. In winter, the concentration of mistletoe lectins is highest, the second important agent of the healing plant. Lectins mainly occur in the old stems and at the center of the mistletoe bush. Lectins inhibit the growth of the cancer cells and cause cell aggregates to congeal. Lectins also stimulate the innate immune system of patients and thereby strengthen the body's own resistance. This immunomodulation also causes a slight rise in temperature which warms the whole body. The first months, everything was very vague. I remember being very tense about the blood test results, always wanting to know, have you got the results? How do things look now? I had great hope in the mistletoe preparation Iskador. However, a certain fear was still there. It wasn't clear where it might have already spread or where it might break out again. Do you actually know what Iskador is made of? From the leaves or from the berries? I assume it's from the berries, but I can't tell you for sure. Or from the leaves, since the berries don't last long and fall off. For the production of Iskador, the young parts of the plants are used as well as the ripe berries from the winter harvest. In addition to lectins and viscotoxins, mistletoe contains many other different agents. The special production process at the Institute Hiskia is crucial for the therapeutic effectiveness of Iskador. After the plants are harvested, the berries are pulverized. The remaining parts of the plant are crushed in a mill. Special lactic acid bacteria in a watery solution breaks down the plant material further. After three days, the mistletoe pulp is pressed.
Summer and winter juices are mixed in a complex process by a machine especially designed for this purpose, to create the actual Iskador concentrate. Iskador is extracted from mistletoe growing on apple, oak, pine, spruce, and elm trees. The choice of the host tree depends on the kind of cancer and constitution of the patient. For treating tumors, Iskador is thinned and filled into ampoules. Iskador has to be individually adjusted to each patient by a doctor. After this introductory phase, patients normally inject the medication themselves. The treatment with Iskador usually lasts at least five, but also sometimes 10 or even 20 years. The best time for the beginning of the Iskador therapy is... The best time to begin the Iskador therapy is already before surgery. When this isn't possible, then as soon as possible afterwards, because when other oncological therapies follow, their side effects can be significantly decreased when mistletoe is used beforehand. If a patient comes to me with a newly found breast tumor, and it's been decided that chemo or hormone therapy will be used, I make this woman aware that if she wants to, and it agrees with her philosophy, I would advise her to couple this therapy with Iskador. But she would have to discuss this with specialists at the Lucas Clinic. Earlier, I completely relied just on traditional medicine. It's also a question of experience. I slowly started to open up and thought, why not also try something else? I have seen a number of patients at times during chemotherapy and could observe one-to-one -one how they benefited from an Iskador therapy that was administered in parallel with chemotherapy, and the patients were therefore able to better endure the chemo. When patients are scheduled for chemo anyway and can be helped to recover better, any means are okay with me. Das Institut Hiskia ist ja ein Teil des Vereins für Krebsforschung und wie der Name schon sagt, The Hiskia Institute is part of the Association for Cancer Research. As the name already indicates, our main focus is to study how cancer reacts to the Iskador. Und diese Kritik the criticism that we have received about not supplying scientific evidence is legitimate. This certainly relates to the fact that the mistletoe therapy is very old, and at the beginning the kind of scientific evidence expected today didn't yet exist. But we aren't evading this point and we have to show how Iskador works in clinical studies as they are required today. And we're working on this. My father clearly says that if he hadn't believed in it, he wouldn't have undergone the therapy for 10 years. And since every year there has been a good report, it's given us a more secure feeling. And today I simply believe that this is a substantial part of why the cancer didn't spread or reappear. This new attitude was also a result of our learning to accept each other. We realized that each had knowledge in a certain area, and when this knowledge can be used well, something positive can develop from it. But he also looked at the mistletoe as well. 
And his view of mistletoe has also changed. It was funny when I mentioned it to him today, he said, actually it's strange. The tree with mistletoe growing on it is the oldest tree we have. We had many younger trees that never had mistletoe on them, and they already disappeared a long time ago.